Here the head coach, Jordan Dupuis, the Lady Demons, uh, a very happy, <laughs> or, or at least a marginally happier Jordan Dupuis, the Lady Demons coming off an 89-73 win at McNeese. Ended a couple of uh, very long streaks on the road. And coach, you're happy for that reason. You gotta be happy to play three in a row at home as well starting Wednesday night. Yeah, uh, very good all around game uh, Saturday. I think the best that we've executed a game plan uh, over the course of 40 minutes. Uh, fought through some adversity the way we started that second half uh, and gave up our lead pretty quick. Uh, and then went to our bench and our bench responded and, and played extremely well. Got a huge spark uh, from Gabby Bell in that third quarter. Uh, shot the ball extremely well, actually out rebounded them, uh, which is something that we haven't done very much, if at all, this year. Uh, being able to shoot 57% for the game, 67% uh, I believe from the three, uh, forced 24 turnovers. So did a lot of great things. Uh, you know, was happy until about Sunday morning and then realized, you know, you got to get ready for the next one. And we've got three home games coming up, but, but two of them are against uh, the best two teams in the conference. And we've just we've got to continue to grow and get better and get ready for them. You mentioned those two teams, Lamar and Stephen F. Austin. Lamar comes in Wednesday, Stephen F. on Saturday. And when you look at the national leaders in terms of forcing turnovers, it's Lamar and you, one and two. Football coaches often talk about possessions, and, and they're obviously – infinitely more in basketball than in a football game, but how important does valuing possessions and holding on to the ball become Wednesday night, maybe as opposed to any other game? It's it's the biggest thing going into this game, to be honest. Uh, you know, both teams want to turn uh, each over other, uh, over each other. And, and so, you know, looked at it this morning, like you said, number one, number two, they have 553 forced turnovers. We have 552 forced turnovers. So. We're going to put that in the game plan, let them know that, hey, this is going to be the battle that, you know, who's, who's going to be the one to take over, number one in the country, and, and turning people over. Let's, let's have some pride. This doesn't happen very much. Uh, we're going to have to do the simple things. Uh, we're going to have to meet passes. We're going to have to chin the ball on defensive rebounds because they like the shadows, what we call it, after defensive rebounds. They're going to look to jump you any chance they can. Um, you know, so it's just one of those things where possession of the ball is, is going to be is going to be huge. Uh, and, and if we don't have it, we do everything we can to get it back. And once we do have it, we do everything we can to, to keep it. And, and you know, there's a lot of complicated things involved with the game plan. But in all honesty, it's that simple. Who's going to value the basketball on Wednesday nights? Who's going to come out on top? I think when you look at the two backcourts, your backcourt, your your point guard combination of Sammy Thomas and Gabby Bell, and then Nautica as the as the two guard, in a lot of ways, kind of similar to what Bars and Kennard do. When uh, your point guard's a little more defensively focused, uh, and we've seen what Nautica Grant can do shooting the ball, and obviously Mo Kennard had just a remarkable game in the all, in the pre-conference season. I believe you set an NCAA record for three. He's sorry to make you worry about that, but. Some similarities in the backcourt from uh, from what you do. Yeah, and, and the value that they bring to their teams. Um, you know, it all starts with our, our backcourt play. If our backcourt play is solid, then the rest of our play is solid. It's no different from them. They, they are extremely long, athletic, tough, physical. The thing that I believe they do a little bit better than us is create their own offense. Uh, you know, you can just give them a ball and they go make a play. Uh, and, and so, whereas we utilize our scheme uh, in, in order to, to make things happen, uh, Lamar is very uh, dribble drive oriented. They spread you out, create off the bounce, uh, going to shoot a lot of threes or get to the rim. Uh, so we're going to have to do a great job of staying in front of the ball, making sure we have early help. Uh, but both backcourts are extremely critical to uh, the success of both teams. First time they'll have been here in your coaching career. First time they come here since 2015, kind of a quirk in the schedule. When you look at it, how much does the home court advantage help you? They've, they've been a little bit more vulnerable on the road uh, score-wise than they have at home. They, they have, uh, and, and hopefully we play with, with confidence, especially after the way we played Saturday. Uh, you know, Just being able to sleep in your own bed, uh, shoot in your own arena, um, you're in your own locker room, I think that, that presents a level of comfort that helps in a game like this. Uh, but the whole key, in my opinion, uh, is going to be the first five minutes of that, of that game. Uh, can we be the one to, to punch them in the mouth first and, and realize that we can play with this team uh, and we can execute versus this team? Um, we also have to understand that they coming off that, that loss at SFA is going to fuel their fire a little bit. Um, so we have to not match their intensity, but exceed their intensity. And I think it's much easier to do that in your home arena than it is on the road. 
You mentioned Stephen F. Austin. You'll see them on Saturday. And you also mentioned with Lamar, get to the basket or shoot threes. It's kind of become the Houston Rocket kind of mentality. And that was the comparison that Stephen F.'s radio person used for them. And I think we saw that the first matchup in Nacogdoches. They shot the ball really well from outside. Didn't yeah. do much in the mid-range and worked it inside. Yeah, they, they did. Uh, they, they hurt us on the block. Uh, and then, you know, we tried to do some things to uh, keep our rotations down, especially when we went zone. Uh, but they did a great job of spreading us out. They went 16 to 28 from the three. Uh, and, and it seemed like once the first three or four went down, everybody felt like, hey, it's, it's my turn. They had post players coming off the bench that, that shot it. I think the manager got in and shot one and made it. So, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things where we got them rolling. We're going to have to do some different things to keep them off balance, uh, play a much more physical game, uh, be much more of a, on an attack mentality uh, on the offensive end. Uh, and, and hopefully, again, if you deliver the first blow, you can realize that, hey, we can play with this team, we can beat this team, especially on our home floor. It's Pac Prather as well. So again, you've talked about it many times. You kind of touched on it with Lamar. Bring some energy, get a good crowd here. And if on top of that, you hit them in the mouth, you've got all the momentum, you've got the, the atmosphere you want, and that can play a large role as well. No doubt, it's extremely important to have a, a great crowd in here. We feed off of our crowd. We feed off of our band. Our band does an unbelievable job of helping create atmosphere uh, and, and getting on the opposing team and, and getting behind our, our ladies. Uh, and so we need that atmosphere. Uh, there, there's no doubt it adds an extra 10, 15, 20 points to, to that game. Uh, there's times in the game where we get down or maybe we get in a little bit of an offensive drought and that crowd comes in. We make one or two plays in a row. We, we feed off that crowd. And, and again, it's just it's a huge difference. So we got to make sure that we're in here on Wednesday uh, and definitely on Saturday for the doubleheader. On top of that, I'm sure you would take 15 and eight every night out from Leah Barnes. That was a, <coughs> she's she's done that before. Now it's just a matter, I think, of stringing those together. Well, and, and the word that we've used the last several weeks is consistency. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, we've had some players that haven't been consistent all year, but we know what they're capable of. And, and Saturday was the day that a lot of people just stepped up to have five and double figures. Uh, I think of Kira Bonner and what she did uh, off off the bench. Nautica didn't have a great first half, but came back with a great second half. Leah was balanced in both halves, uh, hit the glass extremely hard, finished through contact, hit a couple shots, uh, scored a couple buckets at the end of, of uh, shot clocks and possessions. So her minutes were absolutely huge. Um, Libba kind of got in some foul trouble, but then was able to come back, hit a couple huge threes in the second half and a baseline jumper and what we call our open offense when they started pressuring us. Uh, so, you know, again, a lot of people stepped up, and that's what it takes. It had nothing to do with coaching. I said that in the, on the radio after. It's just players stepping up and doing what they're, they're capable of doing and executing the game plan, and, and that's what we're capable of every game out, and hopefully we'll continue that on Wednesday. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.